Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, my name is Pastor Emmanuel right now here with me. Minister Keith Doggett. Mr. Keith came from the hugging the block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we are here. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Press like and share and subscribe to Life in the Word. Amen. Praise yes. the Lord. We, we've been talking about breaking the mixture. Sin, sin causes mixtures, mixtures to happen. Sin. A lot of people were trying to figure out how did they get into the situation. And a lot of times when you begin to pick up the behavior of the people around you, you start to move into sin. Because the people that you connected to, the people that you deal with, like I said in the beginning, we all have our own personal sins we deal with. But it's when you begin to pick up other sins of other people and lose your sanctification, you got you got yourself into a whole lot of trouble. Because yes, you got to deal with yours and whatever else you picked up. So in the Ezra, right, chapter 9, verse 5 says, and at the evening sacrifice, first, first we saw that Ezra was going through anyway because of the state of the people. My men were just standing there like this all day, all night at the sacrifice. Like, he wasn't moving. He was astonished. Astonished means that you stand with your eyes open. Like, do you know how you, how sometimes you so messed up, you stand with your eyes open like this, you're staring, and you like lost your maze of how bad we got. That's how Ezra was. And it says that, and at the evening sacrifice, he rose up from the, from the heaviness. So the, what got him the way he was feeling, yes. he was feeling the heaviness of the mm -hmm. sense of the people. He was feeling whatever was happening with the people, right? So he said, in heaven rent my garment and my mantle. I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto the Lord my God. Man, that's so, when I read that, it's so pic picturesque to me. Because it, it, he gotten so bad that he said, man, it was heavy on me. You know what I'm saying? You know how sometimes so you go through something and say, yo, bro, man, this thing is laying heavy on me. Burden on me. It's a burden. And to the point, he said that he, he ripped his clothes, man. He ripped his clothes, right? He ripped his clothes and his mantle. His mantle is what the cape that's around him, right? And then, and then he said that at this point, Ezra become expressive. Expressive. He, he was standing like this, astonished. Then he fell on his knees, right? He fell on his knees and he spread out his hands. So Ezra was like this, on his knees and the floor, and his hands. Because now that caused him to worship. That causes him to seek God. Your burdens is supposed to cause you to seek God. Your burden is supposed to cause you to cry out to God cry for change. And he said, oh my God, I'm ashamed and blush to lift up my my face. I mean, God, could you imagine God delivered you last week and you back again this week <laughs> for the same thing? Yeah. You know, yeah. been there, done that, yeah, right? Yeah, sir. You're like, oh Lord, I'm blush. I'm ashamed to be able to lift up my face. Matter of fact, God, I don't want to pray the same prayer I pray because I'm just tired of me. I'm tired of myself, yes, God. Yes. I know you're tired of me. Yes, so I don't even want to lift up my face. So Ezra was into that place where he said, I fell upon my knees and spread up my hands unto the Lord my yes, God. Yes. And said, oh my God, I'm ashamed and blushed to lift up my face to thee. My God, for our iniquities are increased over our head. Yes. And our trespass is grown up into the heavens. So he said that it gotten so bad. I want you to imagine a pool. It got three feet where it was, was knee deep, you know, it, it, on your knees. And then it go for three feet, four feet, five feet, six feet. Israel is in the ninth feet where your head can no longer, unless you're not feet tall, your head can no longer um, uh, be seen. So he said, that's how our transgressions and our sins have come upon us. And not only that, and he said that our transgressions, look at this. Our trespass mm -hmm. is grown up unto the heaven. It's bad. Mm -hmm. It's bad. No wonder he out here heavy oh, and on his knees and going crazy. Like, oh, it's wow. bad. Some of you have never seen that. You've gotten so deep wow. that you don't even know how to come out of it. Mm -hmm. I remember watching the show called Deep Cover. Mm -hmm. And it was with Omar Epps. Mm -hmm. 
and LL Cool J play God. So he's a cop trying to be a thug and then he to expose the inner cycle of what's going on. But he got infected to the point that he forgot he was a cop that he, he started to think like a thug. Brother needed therapy to come back to make him a cop because he was he was so deep. Sometimes you can go so deep in sin, so deep in your iniquities, you forgot who you are. It's true. And it's gonna take God because it's over your head. That's where we are right now. It got so bad in the time of Ezra. Didn't the children of Israel forgot their identity? It's it's like right now. As black people, we forgot our identity and who we are. It's being told us because our sins and our iniquities have gone over our heads in our way. Yes. Now, now I want you to look at it, right? He said, since the he said, he said, since the days of our fathers, right? We have uh, our fathers have we been in a great trespass to this day. He said, man, from the days of our fathers till now, we just grown up in this sin. This sin just multiplied to another level. We've been doing this for a long time. You know something? When you've been doing something for a long time, it never stops. It's only keep going. It keep getting worse and worse and worse. And it's not going to get better. That's why it's time to stop it. Now, now look at this. And for, and for our iniquities, have we, our kings and our priests, been delivered into the hands of the kings of the land, to the sword, to the captivity, and to a spoil, and to confusion of faith as it is this day. So Ezra began to say, hey man, I, it, remember Ezra did not say, you know, as church people these days, right, that we in a situation because of the devil. He didn't say that. He said that we are in this state because of our sins and our iniquities. And the consequences of those sins is to be handed over to the enemy and to be put in captives, right? Uh, and to the sword, meaning war, to captivity, and to sport, and to confusion of faith as it is this day. So don't think that when these things happen, it's not speaking to you about your state. Mm -hmm. So these things are happening because we have lost our, our sanctification, our holiness before the Lord. We trying to be around the people um, around the land. So God said the same people that you connect with, you won't, you won't be free from, you won't be separate. I'm going to use them to beat you down. Use them to beat you down unless we repent. And the thing about it, we need an intercessor, and Ezra was a sanctified intercessor to come on behalf of the people so they can see their sin. Second thing, you can't see save people if they don't see their wrong. Some people you can't help because some people are not wrong for what they do. They're stuck and they won't change because they don't see no problem with what they do. They feel like they're the right. Then they're right. Now, now look at this. And now, for a little space, grace have been showed from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape. So now, what that means that there's 200 people, right? 180 is bad. 180 have gone out the way. 180 have lost their sanctification. But we're going to leave the 20, which is a remnant that still got their senses that can recognize we move out the way of the Lord. We've been carried away. So grace, the grace of God is this. I didn't let everybody fail at the same time. Oh, come on now. I left somebody that is free that can bring you out. There's a remnant. The remnant is what? Grace. I left a people that's going to show us how, how wrong we've been, how far we are away from God, how far we have moved from God. And those 20 people are going to talk to the 180 people. Hey, y'all, you're going the wrong way. You need to repent because we're in danger. We've been in this for too long. We got to find our way back. 
And don't think how bad the church is today that God didn't leave a remnant. A remnant, what is a remnant? A small portion of people. A small portion of church. A small portion of pastors. And just because, see the thing about the enemy, he do not allow the minority to be heard. He allowed the majority that, that is in bondage to be spoken. That's why we're not free. The little voices, the, the small people, the remnant, are the ones going to bring back the majority back to God. The, the ones that connected to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, he said, he said, but have extended mercy. Well, well, well verse 8 we were in, right? Grace has been shown from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a nail in his holy place. What is a nail? Something that cannot be removed, something that cannot be forced out, something God always leave a nail. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Are you a nail in the holy place? Mm, a nail, something that is, you know, punched into that structure unmovable everybody can say so so so, so to this morning we put but nails in the house of the yes. lord but look, i pray that you be a nail in your job i pray that you be a nail in your home i pray you be a nail to your family and the holy place despite the craziness around you you standing strong you being seen for who and what you are in your faith and the glory of god upon you I thank God this morning for the nails. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little rebound, reviving in your bondage. How many of us this morning who are in bondage, but God give me a little reviving. Give me a little strength. Have you ever been so hungry, man? You know, so, 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 so hungry. Well, I remember the story with David. And Jonathan, when they were in war, Saul was in war. Saul said, nobody eat. Right? No, nobody need to eat nothing. Everybody fast that day. He's a leader, but he had the wrong knowledge. They didn't come from God. That was his wisdom. How you going fast in a war? I need to eat so I can have strength in the fight. So they were losing the war. And Jonathan came, and Jonathan said, let the people eat up the honey. And what they say that we were revived to fight again. Hmm? This morning, may God revive you so you can break the bondage. May God revive you and see, and so you can see your way out of your bondage, of your iniquities, of your sins, so you can see the way that God have you. Yes. Now, some of you may be here this morning, you feel a little weak, you feel a little tired, you feel, God, I'm, I'm messed up, I'm tired, I'm, I'm all this, but this morning, may you have the honey from heaven and may you be revived to fight your way out of the situation your sins your iniquities the devil had put you in to fight again amen i pray strength in every area of your life and everything that you do today may god bless you and god strengthen you my name is pastor man you right i have it to my left minister keith doggett we have one thing to say to you jesus is lord god bless you